Here we go. Last uh, trig unit, uh, last trig lesson of the quarter. This is it. This is it. I see you again on Tuesday, which will be time for you to work and ask questions. And then on Thursday, you have your test. It's the last test of the quarter. And then you'll go on spring break for a week. You'll come back. You'll have 10, 10, 10 weeks left to school. We all got it? Know where you're at? It's supposed to be like 60 on Sunday or something like that. Okay? It's like spring is in the air. It's a good deal. What's different about these equations compared to what we solved on Tuesday? Or solved yesterday? Squared, right? Yeah. So instead of the first degree, it's the second degree. And not much is going to change, but let's see what happens here. Same step applies here where I add 2 to both sides. And I get sine squared of x is equal to 1. Then I square root both sides. I get sine of x is equal to what's the square root of 1? 1. But because you're square rooting a variable, sine of x is a variable, you have to list both the positive solution and the negative solution. So plus or minus 1. And now we come to an important part in our notes where we have to figure out, figure out sine of 1. Okay? Because uh, first of all, when you when you like go through this process, remember all students take calculus. Okay, so do you remember? So we got plus and negative. So instead of two quadrants, that's going to be all four, isn't it? Like sine is positive here and here, sine is negative here and here. So watch what happens when you uh, when you go to your calculator, you turn it on, and you go sine inverse of 1. You get 90 degrees. So if you draw a 90 degree angle here and a 90 degree angle there, what what is that spot? 90. And if you draw one here and you draw one here, What's that spot down there? 270. So here's some important things I want you to know. Okay, I'm going to write this down. I don't care where you write it, but sine of x is equal to 1 for x equals 90 degrees. Sine of x is equal to negative 1 at x equals 270 degrees. So if those come up, those those are that result. So when it's not a decimal, sometimes people get confused. If you get sine of x is equal to 0, sine is equal to 0 at x equals 0 degrees and at 180 degrees. Write two more of them. We gotta do our cosine. Cosine of x is equal to one at x equals zero degrees. Sine of x is equal to, or I'm sorry, cosine of x is equal to negative one at x equals 180 degrees. And then tangent of it, or I'm sorry, cosine of x is equal to zero at x equals 90 degrees and 270 degrees. The last one, tangent of x is equal to zero at x is equal to zero degrees and 180 degrees. And we'll write tangent of x is equal to 1 at x equals 45 degrees. And we'll just let that be. That'll work out. So those are some special values. And we'll still use our calculator, but this is a good little sheet to reference. And you'll get to use that on the test. I'll make sure you have those notes available for you. So let's try another example. How do you start number 2? 
Yep, subtract 3. You get cosine square root of x is equal to 0. Square root of both sides, what's square root of 0? Zero? 0. 0 doesn't have plus or minus. And so you're kind of confused because you're getting that 0 value. And so you could go and check out this spot that we had right here and say, where is cosine equal to 0? will be 90 and 270. Okay. 90 and 270. Try this one. We subtract 1 from both sides. We have 4 tangent squared of x is equal to 8. Now what? And I divide by 4, we had tangent squared of x equal to 2. I square root both sides, I get tangent of x is equal to 2. Plus or minus the root of 2. That's not a value of 0 or 1, so I don't have to worry too much. Okay. But can somebody tell me, where is tangent positive? Do you remember? All students take calculus. 1 and 3. So therefore, it's negative in the second and fourth quadrants. So we're going to have four solutions. I'm going to make four reference angles. Do you remember what I press on my calculator? Turn it on. Second tangent. Do I use positive root of 2 or negative root of 2? I always use your positive. So root of 2, I type that in. And it's going to give me 54.74 degrees. So we have four spots to figure out. First angle is easy. It's 54.74. How do I figure out that second angle? If I take 180 minus that, so 180 minus that 54.74, and I get 125.26. And then 180 plus 54.74. That will give us this one right here. I get 234.74. How do I figure out my last one? You have 360 minus 54.74. I get 305.26. All right, good job. We got a couple left here. Number uh, four. Let's start by subtracting that one. I get three secant squared of x is equal to six. I divide by three, and I get uh, secant squared of x is equal to uh, two. Do I have a secant button on my calculator? So what should I do? Switch it to cosine. Cosine is the reciprocal of secant. So cosine squared is 1 half. And now obviously what do we have to do? Square up both sides. So the cosine squared of x is equal to plus or minus the root of 1 half. I'm not going to worry about the square root of a fraction. It's not my final answer. I'm just going to use it to find my final answer. So uh, 
Let's figure that out. Where is cosine positive? One of four, so it's negative here and here. So I've got four solutions as well. I go to my calculator and sorry about that, that's squared value. I do cosine inverse of, and I type in the square root of one half. Just gotta be careful that you type it incorrectly, okay? Dude. See you got square one half using your parentheses appropriately. I get forty-five. So 45 is the obvious one. How do you find the second one? Yeah, you may know what 180 minus 45 is. 135. How do you find the third one? 180 plus, we're getting 225. And then 360 minus 45 will give you 315 degrees. So you have four solutions. Good work. What's different about problems five and six? These are our last ones to do. Last two examples of the quarter. What's different about these two? You have multiple trig functions, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you back. Don't write this down, but I'm going to bring you back to this. If you had three x squared is equal to two x, you know, you kind of would wonder how to solve that. You would actually take three x squared minus two x is equal to zero. You would bring it over to both sides, and then you would factor out an x. So you get 3x minus 2, and then you get x equals 0 here, and x equals 2 thirds there. That, that's what you would do. Okay? That's the process you would go through. Now, the only difference between these equations is instead of having an x, I've got sine of x. That's the only difference. We solve everything else the same. Everything else the same. So let's subtract the 2x over 3 sine squared of x minus 2 sine of x equals zero. What is it that you can factor out? Sine of x. You now have two equations. Because of the zero product property, you have sine of x is equal to zero, and you have three sine of x minus two is equal to zero. So this is like day one, right? We know how to solve that. From our notes, where did we say sine was equal to zero? Zero degrees and 180 degrees. So those are the two solutions for that. However, your two solutions here are going to be different. What we have to do is we have to solve by adding 2. You get 3 sine of x is equal to 2. Divide by 3, sine of x is 2 thirds. Is my sine value positive or negative? Positive. In which quadrants is sine positive? All students take calculus. So one and two. Go to my calculator. And I go sine inverse of two thirds. And I get 4181. So our solution, we have zero degrees. We have 41.81 degrees. We're going to have that 180 minus 4181. So 180 minus that answer. And I get 138.19. And what's my last number? Got 180. 
So you've really learned how to solve three types now of trigonometric equations. The first type was if it's just all to the first power. Add, subtract, find your quadrants, find the solutions. I know I made that sound really simple. I just don't know it's not that easy. And then you've also solved ones that are squared. And then you've solved ones that have a squared but also have more than one function attached. So last example, I got two different types of functions. I got cosine and I got tangent. And again, we're just going to factor out the cosine. So at the beginning, the problem looks nearly impossible. But fortunately, you're extremely smart. So we're going to make it easy. We have two equations now we have to solve. We have cosine squared of x is equal to 0. And we have 1 minus tangent of x is equal to 0. Square root both sides, and we get cosine of x is equal to 0. Does anybody remember on our sheet where cosine is equal to 0? Yes, we got x is 90 and 270. And then we got this guy, 1 minus tangent of x is equal to 0. If I add the tangent over, I get 1 is equal to tangent of x. Um, sine and cosine, if they come out to be 0 and 1, there's kind of special solutions. If tangent comes out to be 0, there's special solutions. But if tangent comes out to 1, it's not necessarily a special solution. We can, we can still set it up like normal. Do you remember where tangent's positive? 1 and 3. So we have first quadrant, we have third quadrant. And if you remember from our sheet, we said that tangent is equal to 1 at, you may remember what it was? Yeah, 45. So what that means is you have a 45 degree angle here, but you also have a 45 degree angle down there. And so you're going to have 45 degrees that you add to this list, but then you have 180 plus 45, which is 225. So I guess if you wanted to, you could, you know, add that to the list, the tangent is equal to 1 at 45 and 225. But, uh, so yeah. We just, on a normal year, we would have, you know, three times. I mean, can you guys believe that? Like, we're going to, you guys are going to be here next week, or, two, you know, three weeks, and you're going to have class for, let's see, four times a week for about 45 minutes. So what's four times 45? We got 180, right? 180. And so 180 minutes a week, whereas right now, you're 56 minutes a week. So that means that you're going to have three times the amount of opportunity that we had before. You see what I'm saying? Like on a normal situation, I'd be able to uh, actually go a little bit more in depth on some of these things. So great job, you guys, for keeping up with everything. I know it's been a challenging year, a challenging quarter to try to learn trig, uh, but you've learned a lot of stuff. I mean, you know, 